Hi, I'm Andy Glass with WorkshopAddict.com. We've had the Works Landroid automatic mower in our yard here for about four weeks. Now, we don't feel that's enough time to actually give you an honest, true review in the Workshop Attic fashion, so we thought we'd do an installation video. Now, this is model number WG794, and it has a capacity of a quarter acre. Now, my in-town yard here is a quarter acre, or my lot, but you have to minus the hardscapes, the house, the patio, sidewalks, driveways, landscaping, etc. So this little unit is well in its capacity to actually mow this entire yard. Now this is an installation video. We're going to go step by step and then we're going to go ahead and cover some of the uh, difficulties or challenges with an auto mower. As you see here, we have a fence. We have the two gates to deal with uh, and then some landscaping and boulevard stuff. So we'll go ahead and cover those. Now this should develop some tips and tricks and help make your installation easier as well as give you an idea of what goes in, in you know what's involved in installing one of these but it should not replace the instructions that come with this unit. So pair this video up with those instructions and hopefully you have a seamless and smooth installation. So let's go ahead and get started. You first need to mow your grass to get a nice starting point for your auto mower. You want to do this before you lay the ground wire so you don't catch on it with your regular lawn mower. Next we need to determine where to put the docking station. This is where the unit will charge so it needs power and it also needs a straight shot 6 feet in front of the docking station and also 6 feet behind it. This makes sure there is a smooth transition to and from the docking station. The unit will go around counterclockwise around your property to get back to the docking station when it runs out of power. There is an arrow on the docking station for which way you need to orient it. The power cord on the docking station is impressively long. We had no issues running it along the fence and getting into the garage to find an outlet. When you have established your docking station location, temporarily put the docking station pegs to lock it in position. The unit comes with two cardboard distance gauges to help to determine the correct spacing from your boundary. We found that one of our hunting arrows was the perfect length for the spacing of the actual pegs and then we used a mark at 14 inches on the arrow to determine the boundary setback. We preferred a hard distance gauge over the cardboard one. Here's a pro tip so pay attention. We used some mason string to run a tight line from one peg along the fence down to the corner. We checked the distance of the string with our marking gauge and made sure it was at 14 inches. And then we used some marking spray paint to paint a line over the mason string. We actually improve on this method so stay tuned for a little bit of an improved technique. We then remove the string and use our string trimmer to cut a small trench for the wire. This did two things. First, it cleared the grass and made it much easier to get the wire to lay flat. Second, it made an ever so slight trench that the wire and peg could sit in. This added a bit of extra safety to help prevent the wire or pegs from being caught on something. When we were done, we threw some black dirt and grass seed over the wire and allowed it to grow. With our first trench done, we can start placing the wire and pegging it in place. We used our arrow to double check our 14 inch setback and also the length of the arrow was the recommended peg spacing. This process was very fast for just myself doing it, but it would have been extremely fast with the help of another set of hands. Just simply handing you the pegs and stretching out the wire and keep it from looping in on itself would have made the process done in half the time. When we reach our first corner, we stop 14 inches away from the perpendicular fence and then we can use our string again to mark out the next stretch. We do the same process, but this time instead of a dash line, we set a solid line and this helped during the string trimming or trenching process. Another pro tip for the trenching process. We determined on our third section of fence to run the string trimmer so the grass is being thrown into the next section of trench to be completed. The first two sections of fence, we did the string trimming process where the string would just throw the grass back into the trench. We could easily clean it out, but if you use the direction to your advantage, it will save a lot of time and work cleaning out the trench. We lay the string in the trench and peg it just like the first section of the fence.
When we get to the side of the house near the landscaping off the deck, the layout process is a little bit tedious, and this is where we made our next improvement. Instead of the string, just line up the spray can with the mark on your gauge and spray the setback line. No need for the string. Near the patio, we want it closer than 14 inches so it actually mows over the top of the patio so we don't have to string trim. We use the same technique where we line up the spray can on the actual marking gauge and eliminate the need for the string. With the line marked, we went ahead and ran our string trimmer and made our trench and now we can just work the line right around the landscaping and the patio. We continued the exact same process all the way around the backyard of the house, marking the line, trenching it with the string trimmer, setting the line, pegging it, until we get all the way back to the docking station. Once back at the docking station, you're going to want to run that wire underneath the unit and then strip the cables and plug it into the appropriate side of the terminals on the back. Now the back of the unit has a nice uh, pictogram on there and shows you exactly where you need to go. With the boundary wire in place and the docking station set up, we can go ahead and follow the instructions, set the amount of time we want it to mow each day and when we want it to actually start mowing each day, and we can go ahead and run the first test cut. It says to put it uh, where you see it here in the picture and press go. The unit will go ahead and drive forward. It knows it's right behind the docking station and it will go counterclockwise all the way along the boundary wire until it comes back into the docking station and charges. The biggest decision you're going to make when installing your Works Landroid Auto Mower is where you're going to put the charging or docking station. Now initially when we got the unit I started to think about where to put it. You need to locate it near a plug. The um, co power cord that comes with this unit is very long so you can reach quite a ways. Initially I was going to put it right here along the dog kennel and air conditioner uh, but Works suggests that you keep it out of the sun. Uh, batteries getting heated up do not perform as efficient, they don't charge as fast, and that's going to ultimately hurt the performance of the unit. So instead of going over here, I went along the fence and I ran the power cord along the fence under the gate and actually ran it into the dog doggy door into the garage. As we talked about earlier, you need six feet in front of the docking station and six feet behind it so the Landroid can properly align itself with the docking station and go ahead and get back on track. Works has determined you need 14 inches away from your boundary such as this fence. Now that puts it a little bit farther away from the fence but I figure why not uh, risk not hitting the fence and screwing up your installation process when you have to get out the string trimmer anyways. 
As we talked about in the step-by-step -step installation instructions, we put the boundary wire very close to the actual patio here, and that's because we wanted to actually mow all the way up to it and not have to string trim here. Now, when we got this unit, we thought the installation was gonna be an absolute bugger, so we decided just to do the backyard. Well, we literally installed the unit in under two hours plus filming, and so we way overestimated the amount of time it actually took to install. Uh, but before thinking about it, we really couldn't get to the front yard without doing a little thinking and decision making. One being, you have to have three feet in between the boundary wires. And so if you remember earlier, we have to have 14 inches from the edge so it can ride on there and not hit that. So if you take 14 inches from this post, 14 inches from this post, you do not have three feet. So right now it's just in the backyard and it's saving us a ton of time but we want to get the unit to the front yard as well as the front yard on the other side of the house so we don't have to mow this either. So my thought is we are going to remove this section of the front fence here and allow us that three feet in between the boundary wires. Now we're going to have to set up a zone as it gets nice and tight here and make sure the unit spends enough time in the front of the yard. If you also notice we have a close gap in the landscaping rocks up there so we'll have to have a nice zone up there as well. Here on the left side of the house, and we do have a gate, um, just like the other side of the house, we don't meet that three foot minimum in between the boundary wire. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this post and all the fencing against that corner post there. And now we have widened it enough so we can actually get the unit through. We will have to make a zone here so the unit knows it has to spend a certain amount of time per day up in the front yard here in this specific quadrant. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that installation for the Works Landroid Automatic Robotic Mower. So far for the four weeks, we're pretty happy with it. We've just had it in the backyard here. We've been brainstorming on how to take uh, you know, this unit to the front yard and overcome those challenges with the gates. Uh, but we've just determined that it's such a benefit for this thing to mow the backyard. We want to bring it to the front and it's just worth it to remove that fence. So that is a setback for these units. We hope we brought you some tips and tricks and, and gave you some insights on exactly what's involved with an automatic mower. And hopefully you can help make your decision or uh, you know, make that jump and actually purchase one and have the confidence. We were very, very impressed with the literature, the, the ease of installation. We had it installed in under two hours and that included filming. Uh, and we were very, very impressed. Obviously the, the fence work and then wiring up the front yard is going to add to that, so keep that in mind as well. But let us know if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns below in the comments. We'd love to provide some feedback and answer any questions you may have. Follow us on social media as we do product review updates. Uh, just like installing this, we covered it a few posts, as well as project updates and exclusive social media giveaways. I'm Andy Glass with WorkshopAddict.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Time to go get a beer.